when you think about sort of how modern card issuing fits into what fintech is building, the way I kind of split it out is there's sort of three different ways to think about it. One is uh, the card is a product itself, right? And so obviously there have been lots of fintech companies that have launched card products. Um, I think for the most part, they started in debit. They're now starting to migrate over to charge cards and to credit. But when you think about you know the product itself and the card as a product construct, the innovation is all around different ways that that construct can be expressed to the end user. So it's not just a plastic or metal card. It is a set of virtual cards that you can issue for all different types of capabilities, including getting free trials or you know signing up for subscriptions that you can manage. So enabling more sort of flexible uses of the credential. Um, it's also making the credential itself more flexible. So we see this at a network level with what Visa is doing around flex credential and the ability for a card number to point to multiple different funding sources. Uh, I think a firm, um, you know, Alan mentioned buy now, pay later, they're going to be one of the first companies that's going to build on that flex credential to tie debit and buy now, pay later together within the same card construct controlled by the end customer, which is pretty cool. And then of course, you know, David mentioned digital wallets and Apple Pay, and none of that is going away. In fact, banks are really aggressively trying to catch up on digital wallets through pays and a number of other initiatives. And so I think at a card product level, you see lots of innovation around the construct and sort of how it's expressed to the end customer. The second <clears throat> manifestation of the card in a fintech context is the card is a business model. And um, again, this is where I go back to sort of the shift we're seeing in fintech. Everyone started in debit. This is why smaller community banks are oftentimes the partners for fintech companies is that they have Durban exempt interchange rates that they can offer. We're starting to see that migrate away. And you know these Durban exempt business models where it's just built around debit interchange, those are kind of no longer acceptable in fintech and fintech companies are trying to expand beyond that. So you see a lot more competition around charge cards. You see a lot more competition around credit cards. And a lot of the barriers that used to exist for fintech companies getting into credit are going away because a lot of modern card issuing platforms can support debit and credit. There's a much more robust uh, private credit industry that can sort of provide the balance sheet behind the credit card. And so you see a lot more innovation moving into charge cards and credit and not just being stuck in debit. And then the final thing I just wanted to mention really quickly is uh, the card as data. And this is, I think, the one that gets a little bit lost, but when you think about, you know, building digital products, which, um, you know, Gary, I think that was something you mentioned at the very beginning, like how do you build digitally native products to be competitive in this new environment? I think one thing we need to sort of wrap our heads around is that a lot of the products that consumers want don't look at all like card products, right? And so I'll use like Ramp as an example here, but I think this this construct applies pretty broadly. Ramp isn't a card. That's not the core product. The core product is a set of software workflows that are designed to help companies save money. And you can understand how that same approach of building software that's designed to provide automation, intelligence, that's designed to save money, save time, that type of construct can work extraordinarily well in B2C, in B2B. It works in all kinds of different use cases. And the key is, it's built around software. Software is the product, that's what you're buying. And the card is just an enabler for all of the software to work. And so the card is what's transmitting the real-time data. The card has APIs built into it. And so you're able to connect all of the different software workflows that you're building. When a transaction happens, it can trigger a set of actions to be taken. And so all of the data and intelligence built into Ramp or similar products is enabled by the card sort of facilitating the data transfer across that software product, but the card itself is not really the point. And I think directionally that's where FinTech is headed. And when I think about where banks need to go to sort of keep pace, it's thinking beyond the card as a product construct and thinking more of is it an enabler for the types of software-driven experiences that consumers and businesses want.